One thing that I've really been working on recently is just creating every day, even if it's just five minutes, 10 minutes, it doesn't matter if it's the best thing that you ever created, it just matters that you're creating. My name is Laura Escaday. I'm a violinist, composer, sound designer, and live show designer. I've toured the world and worked with various different artists like Kanye West, Miguel, Cirque du Soleil. At my core, I'm a violinist. And it was when I found the electronic music culture in college and started trying to record violin over DJ's music, I became obsessed with production. From there, I just started to teach myself, reading a lot of books and manuals, and this is pre-YouTube, so I really I really had to just dig in and learn by, on my own. I call my sound future classical, so it's a combination of the classical music that I grew up playing with the futuristic sounds that I've grown to love and love to create on all the various different kinds of controllers and instruments that I use. So this is my project song called Unlimited Expansiveness. Actually, the very first thing that I used was Arcade because I didn't know what I wanted to create. So I found this lovely piano melody and rhythm from this ingredients pack in Arcade. It sounds like this. I decided that I wanted this to be an E minor, and all of a sudden I had a motif, and I built the entire song around this motif. So from there, I started creating other sounds. There was another arcade texture from the particles pack. When I feel like I'm having trouble coming up with an idea, I turn to Arcade now. There, it's just an idea machine. It's so awesome because you can just choose what key you want to be in and just try different things on. I just love reaching for output instruments because there's nothing out there that sounds like it. It's got such a cool, unique, organic, but electronic sound, and it just matches my vibe, the future classical vibe so much. As you can see, it starts getting heavier and heavier on tracks here. The next thing I added was another instrument from Slate and Ash called Auras. Then I brought in Diva. And then over here, I've got some layered strings. So this is a layer of the Spitfire Audio Hans Zimmer strings and outputs analog strings. And so if I just solo the, the Zimmer strings, it sounds like that. And what I really love about the analog strings is that it just gives this really cool texture to it. my MIDI fighter here and I mapped these knobs to the different parameters and analog strings to create some movement. So I had it starting out kind of midway through on the spread and then becoming more and more expansive, just like the name of the song. more movement in was this exhale instrument. Sounds like this. So I, again, automated the rhythm of the instrument. Over the course of a couple of bars so that it could match the sound of the rhythm of the analog strings changing. And I also used portal, I have quite a bit of automation here. I also map this to my controller here. So I've got the X and Y going on 
for the macros on Portal. And this was really fun to create some more movement in the sound. In the beginning of the song especially, this was the embodiment of the expansiveness of the song. By using all of the, the automation here that I did, I feel like it all started to, to come together in that way. I oftentimes start creating music with a performance in mind. When I'm done creating the song, the next thing that I'm going to do is perform it live. I perform half-finished songs all the time because it helps me come up with ideas. When I'm performing live, I really try to play all of the elements or as many of the elements on my own. And so I might drop out some of the sounds from the original song and just create from scratch. I think being a musician has really helped me in live show design, live show programming, playback engineering. I can speak the language of the musicians and the musical directors and the artists. And I think that's one of the reasons why I became a go-to in this field is because I had the feeling. It wasn't just like pushing buttons, it's using my ears and using my years of experience in order to create the music that they are hearing in their head. And so it's really just about translating what you think that they're hearing in their head to the software and then to the audience. So I also recorded my own violin. And I thought that it sounded a little static and I wanted it to match all the rest of the parts in the beginning that were really moving. And so I added the movement plugin by output on it. So it's creating this panning and volume changes, and I think it really just adds some interesting textures. One thing that I did, which will be the next step in this song, is I took each note from Arcade and routed the audio from Arcade into a singular track. And so I use Ableton Live's Convert Harmony to New MIDI track and created some MIDI notes here. What I decided to do with the MIDI notes was to create some sheet music. And my next step is going to be to re-record the piano and layer the violin on top of it in this section. Utilizing the looper is really important for me because it helps bridge what I'm doing in the live performance scenario, which I'm really comfortable in, and in the studio scenario, and just allows me to come up with all these different kinds of layers and not have to have my hands on the mouse and on the controls and just be more free with my playing. The Unreal Visual Project is a collaboration between Scott Pagano and I. Basically, I am controlling the modules on the screen with my violin. So I'm creating the modules, I'm changing the colors with my violin, the, the bow pressure, I'm controlling the glitchiness of it with my Wii controller. So I'm fully just interacting with the visuals live in the moment. It literally is unreal that all this can happen in real time. Now that it's working, it's just a dream. So now I'm gonna show you how I resampled my violin in Arcade. This is such a cool trick and it's been a game changer for me. What I did was I took this violin loop here and I dragged it onto this key here. If I go into edit mode, you can see this is the whole long sample. If I hold down this key on my push, it'll play through the sample. And now the next thing that is super cool is this mode here, which is the resequence mode. So I've just chosen eight different sample points here, and then I have the ability to step sequence these and resequence these sounds. 
And I can even reverse the sounds if I want to and change the speed on individual sounds, change the length. There's so much that you can do here. So if I wanted to record that, I could just do so on my track here. I'm gonna record it in the breakdown. And automate those different parameters and just create some new textures and new rhythms from my playing. I think what I'm meant to do is what I'm doing right now. I just know that I'll just continue to create. When I'm working on a live show or performing, I'm just interested in creating an impact on the audience and really making them feel like they're going on a journey with me, making them feel the emotions that I feel when I create this music. People joke when they come to my shows, they say like, oh, it's kind of like a master class in a performance. I'll take a few moments to just show like, hey, this is what I'm doing here because it's lost on a lot of people, especially if they're not in the music tech world. It's just important for me to strike that balance between performing something that's engaging and makes people feel moved and also teaching something, little teachable moments. When I first started in this industry, there were not as many tools and you couldn't do as much. I just love that technology can help us overcome our own limiting beliefs about ourselves. I think it's awesome.